everybody, folks. Uh, so I, I, I completely forgot what I was going to say. Uh, I suppose that's because I'm lacking some self-management skills and I didn't prepare this lecture as well as I should have. Oh, haha, -ha, maybe I don't. Maybe, I, maybe it's all planned. I'm, I'm going to let you decide if we planned all these mistakes or not. Um, folks, so what we're going to talk about today, uh, or in this video, I should say, is some self-management, all right? Uh, so you probably have heard the term self-control, and I know you've heard the term willpower. So we're going to kind of break a couple of those things down. So we're going to start today, or sorry, today. I don't know why I do that. Uh, we record lots of videos each day, so I don't know why I say today. Anyway, um, so we, we are going to talk a little bit about some of the background and some of the differences between what, between <laughs> about why we don't like the terms willpower, about why I personally and a lot of colleagues out there don't like the term self-control, um, even though that's the term Skinner used. Um, keep in mind, we here at uh, PsychCorp are all about the evidence-based practices uh, and, and the, the more current, and not, I don't want to say more current, but the stuff that's valuable, right? So Skinner's awesome, but we're not dogmatic about Skinner. So just because Skinner used the term self-control, doesn't mean that we're going to stick with that term. There's a reason why we don't want to. It has to do with reification and all that stuff. So anyway, ah, I digress, as always. <laughs> if you've watched enough videos by now, you understand that. So what is self-management, right? So self-management, first off, is a set of skills. What skills? It's the application of behavior change techniques to your own behavior. That's self-management in a nutshell, right? So I'm going to use reinforcement, I'm going to use punishment, I'm going to use socially mediated reinforcers. See the video, it's kind of funny. I'm going to use uh, um, contingency contracting, I'm going to use, uh, oh, I don't know, token economies, I'm going to use extinction, I'm going to use whatever it is um, in order to get my behavior under control. Whatever that may mean, right? So we still have all the same rules. We're going to establish a target behavior, but I'm going to manipulate it. I'm going to be the one that catches myself doing well. That sounds kind of funny, and Skinner talked about it as a controlled response versus a controlling response, right? So he had two pieces to self-control. Notice I bounced back and forth between self-control and self-management, right? So he had those two pieces between self-control that he identified. The controlled response, the one you're trying to modify, and the controlling response, the skills that you're doing to modify the behavior. In other words, the behavior analysis skills, right? Why do we not use the term self-management, or why do we not use the term self-control? Well, in order to understand that, we need to understand why you don't use the term willpower. The term willpower creates a, allows you to reify it, all right? So reify means take something not real and make it real, okay? That's the simple definition of it. So when we say willpower, we can say, Brad has a lot of willpower. The sentence makes sense, but, but logically and empirically, it has like zero. There's, it doesn't make sense at all. You don't have it. It's a skill set that you engage in, all right? Um, so we don't like the term willpower, so we then kind of moved on with Skinner's writings to the self-control literature. We talked about the word term self-control. We have the same problem with self-control. Brad has a lot of self-control. You just reify it. It's not a thing. It's a skill set. It's, it's a series of actions that you engage in. Um, so when I studied under Brigham, he taught me heavily to focus on the term self-management. Because if I say Brad has a lot of self-management, guess what? It doesn't make sense. It leaves you hanging. You're like, has a lot of self-management. What? He has a lot of self-management skills, okay? So Brad has self-management skills. What are those skills? Those skills are behavior analytic um, skills that are the ones that we're talking about with all of the videos, right? Um, so the ability to modify behaviors that are behaviors that you also admit. We're gonna go in more detail in another video about all of this stuff, but really what you need to remember with self-control is that it's, uh, sorry, <laughs> I, did it, I, I make the mistake too, right? So what you need to do with self-management, what you need to remember, is that it is a skill. It's a series of skills, and just like any series of skills, you might have to go through some shaping, you might have to go through some differential reinforcement, you might have to go through some punishment, you might have to go through some extinction. You're not gonna be an expert at it the first time you attempt it. It takes practice, it takes time to learn these skills. It, they're powerfully, they're wonderfully effective, just like they would be uh, if you're working with anyone else's behavior but you have a unique set of opportunities to kind of short circuit yourself, if you will, right? Um, so it becomes challenging to use these things when you're modifying behavior that you also emit. Um, so, uh, so keep that in mind. So we're gonna go into the details in another video with some other pieces of self-management that you need to be aware about and then some, uh, some useful techniques for you that I've found to be helpful and that others have found to be helpful and that the research says is helpful. Uh, so, but for now, I think that's a good intro to self-management. Take care, see you soon, bye.